Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we have an early impression of a fragrance that showed up on my doorstep thanks to the generosity of one of you. Rachel, thank you very much. Uh, you are way too kind. Uh, this The fragrance we're going to be doing an early impression on today is a fragrance from a house I've never explored before. I knew about it, but I've never smelled any of um, the work from this house, and it's a house that's called The Zoo. I'll talk to you a little bit about the background of the house in just a moment, but here's the fragrance. Um, the Zoo Everlasting is what this is called. Now, this says 2020, uh, but Parfumo says this was released in 2016 when the brand was founded, so I think this is one of the original creations from, from the brand, if I'm not mistaken, although they do put the year of the fragrance here, so I don't know whether this was reformulated or, or, or maybe this was just the year that this sample was created in. I don't really know the aesthetic of the brand, uh, but that is um, what we're going to be looking at today. And let me read you a little bit about the brand first. Uh, the, it says, the zoo is a U.S.-based niche perfumery brand founded by Christophe Laudemiel, who is known for his innovative and, pro and provocative approach in perfume making. We see, this is a direct quote, we see each of our fragrances as animals. They compose a Menagerie of colors and personalities requiring exotic ingredients from around the world. They are blended by Christoph Lademiel to deliver intrigue, surprise, and comfort, and shipped in natural woolen pouches where they long for you to unleash them. For each, you will enjoy a set of dreams, anecdotes, and twists. Um, so this fragrance, basically, in a nutshell because I've been wearing it today. I have about a six and a half hour dry down on my left hand, and I have about an hour dry down on my right hand. And by the way, one thing I should mention I really like about this sample, this is a regular size Hermes sample. Look at the sample that um, the zoo gives you. This is like five ml worth of juice. I mean, it's a, it's a big sample. Look at that. It just dwarfs a normal sample. I do really appreciate that because you can really wear it. I mean, I'll be able to get multiple full wears out of this. Um, it's hard to see because of the sticker that goes all the way around, but even though I've applied it twice and even worn it to bed once before, the juice is only like right here. So I like the fact that it is a big sample. So let's talk about this fragrance because this fragrance falls into a category of fragrances that is a very easy like for me. And that is labdanum. This fragrance is all about labdanum, which is one of the few natural ingredients that I've smelled on its own. I have a couple different natural ingredients that I've smelled on their own. I have some frankincense resin from Oman. I showed that in my frankincense video that I did. And I have labdanum resin. And I actually bought the labdanum resin off of Amazon years ago. You could actually buy it and it would come in like this sealed pouch. You could pull the paper up and you would be able to smell it. And I don't know where it is. I wish I could find it. Maybe it got tossed. I don't know. But I remember thinking, wow, I could wear labdanum. It's just a perfume. I mean, it is just a beautiful natural ingredient in and of itself. Sometimes it can smell resinous. It can smell smoky. It can even give off some leathery animalic facets to it. But a lot of times, labdanum is used to create that amber-like accord. By the way, Chris, this Christopher uh, Laudemiel character, I'm, I'm not too familiar with his work, but he did do some hits. He had some hit fragrances over the last two decades, one of which was Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. He was the perfumer behind that. He was also the perfumer behind um, Polo Blue, which, not my type of perfume, but some people really like that fragrance. He, he's a perfume behind a fragrance called Rich Mess, which I would love to smell. That's been on my wish list to smell for a long time, Rich Mess. And he's pretty much done all the Strange Love New York City fragrances, although I don't think that's his brand. I think he just, has just been the perfumer of that brand. And I think the Zoo actually is his brand. I think this is the brand from, from, um, from Christoph. 
And he was also the perfumer be behind Tom Ford's Amber Absolute, which I've never smelled, but some people say is one of the best amber fragrances. So you can see that he is, um, with that amber note, and this being a labdanum fragrance, he's good at making that accord. Now, a couple fragrances really quick before we hop into what I get from this. Number one, if you like fragrances like Leo du Desert Marocaine. Now, I've never smelled the heavier, denser Eau Corps du Desert, um, which is almost like an extra version of Leo du Desert Marocaine. But if you like this style of fragrance, I think you will like Everlasting. Um, that's number one. A couple other just straight up labdanum fragrances to me. Uh, this one with incense, I did a first impression of this the other day. This is uh, Tom Ford's Sahara Noir. This is a discontinued uh, feminine targeted fragrance that is completely unisex, maybe even leaning masculine because of the incense, the resins. Oh, I love this fragrance. I would love a full bottle of Sahara Noir. And then the other two, one is um, Roja's Haut Lux, or just Roja, but people call it Haut Lux. Um, it's, it's his most expensive fragrance. It's apparently Roja's personal fragrance that he wears. This is a labdanum bomb for me. This is labdanum and oak moss and, and some uh, beautiful florals like jasmine from grass, the usual Roja, you know, DNA, but it's, it's labdanum. And the, the problem that this fragrance has is $3,500 a bottle. So while sure, I would love to have a bottle, I would never pay the kind of money that I paid for Great Britain. I love Great Britain. I could take or leave this because there is a king labdanum fragrance for me. Anyways, the best labdanum fragrance I've ever smelled. One of the only fragrances that I wish I would have got a bigger bottle of. I'm kicked myself for only getting the 75 and not the 200 ml. And that is Chanel's Le Lyon. This is the best labdanum fragrance ever for me. Um, it shows all the parts of labdanum. That smokiness is just to die for. This is about, and, and, and this is the reason why I'll never spend the money on the Roja, because I could buy so many bottles of this, and this is a superior fragrance to me. Now, this came out, like I said, in 2016, right? So obviously, they couldn't have known that there was going to be Chanel just blasting through the ultimate labdanum fragrance. But if you're a labdanum lover like I am, put Everlasting on your to sniff list because let me read you the um, let me read you the ingredients from Everlasting. So uh, what you have is you have labdanum, narcissus, amber, musk, oak moss. Now. That Narcissus note is apparently not just Narcissus, but it's Narcissus Absolute, which um, is, a, is a concentrated form of Narcissus. And when people think of Narcissus, they think of the flower. Apparently, the Narcissus here is supposed to add this sort of green feeling to it. It almost is supposed to give it this chiffre-like vibe. The fragrance is supposed to have this chiffre-like vibe because of the French Narcissus Absolute. Uh, and then there is, of course, moss. There's the oak moss. There is some sort of nondescript, probably synthetic woody material in here. But this is all about the labdanum and the Narcissus for me with, of course, a little bit of musk. And... Um, it starts out, the first 30 minutes are not my favorite because that Narcissus Absolute seems to get in the way of what I want to smell, which is what I want to smell is that beautiful labdanum. If you know anything about labdanum, you know in the old days, the way that they used to harvest labdanum, labdanum is the farmers would actually let their goats go and just scourge the fields, the labdanum fields, and goats would chew on the plants and that sticky resinous material would actually come out of the plants. It's very hard to har harvest those plants in the old days without modern technology. So the goats would chew on it and that r r resin uh, would get all over the goat's beard. They would go back to the, to the farmer, uh, to the rancher in, in the old days, 
and the goat herder and they would use a specialized brush that was actually made specifically for harvesting labdanum off of the goat's beard and they would collect it that way because it's a very precious material in the old days it was even used for like healing wounds they would put it inside of a wound if you got wounded in a battlefield um you know they would they would put labdanum on the wound to help stop the bleeding and it was also supposed to have some sort of um antibacterial um anti-infection properties as well and and so as far as you know thousands and thousands of years people have been have known about the properties of labdanum and labdanum is an ingredient that is very special to me because when I wear it, it does something that many other ingredients just don't do. They don't put me in this state of mind. They don't create this type of beautiful fragrance. But the first 30 minutes, that French Narcissus Absolute that they are using, I feel gets in the way if that's really what it is that I'm smelling in the opening. And I want it to go away. I just want the labdanum in that ambery, goopy, resinous feel to kind of come out. And I want to enjoy that. Uh, and so after about 30 to 45 minutes, when this really settles down, I really enjoy the dry down. I really enjoy the fragrance. It has that you know, um, it has that green embellished chiffre character in the opening. Uh, but then once that starts to to dry, to, to dry, once the fragrance really starts to dry and that Narcissus starts to evaporate and it is everlasting. This has been lasting on my skin very well for six and a half, almost seven hours. And you can really smell the quality labdanum, which is such a beautiful ingredient. Like I said, I could, I could wear it. Um, I could, I could wear it on my own. When you first spray it has this, um, you almost think it's going to lean much more feminine than some of these fragrances I've talked about previously, like Le Leon, Sahara Noir, uh, and Roja's Hot Lux. They don't lean as feminine from the opening, traditionally feminine, let's say. I'm not sure where that comes from, but there is a little bit of a feeling like this has almost like this traditionally feminine vibe. Maybe it is the Narcissus Absolute that I'm just not very familiar with or used to. Uh, but after 30 minutes, that feeling really goes away. And I think this is completely unisex. Um, Laird du Desert Marocaine is what the one that everyone compares this to. But it does have a little bit of its own touch to it. There's a little bit, you know, that, that Narcissus Absolute is the twist, if you will, to me. There is something that they wrote about. Um, I saw there was like a blurb from the brand. Let me see if I can find it. Maybe I can find the blurb for you guys. Let's see. Everlasting. Oh, by the way, this brand does things a little bit different because they... Um, they split their fragrances up by category. So one category is like fresh, one category is forbidden. I don't know how that plays. And, and one category is sexy. And apparently everlasting falls in the sexy category, um, which who knows? Uh, okay, so here's what it says. It says dream. Some of the best things in life appear in darkness and will entice you to live or tell a good tale. Scent. Labdanum resin extracted from this wild Spanish plant smells very resiny, ambery, and somewhat leathery. Combined with large amounts of Narcissus Absolute from Aubrac Avren, France, the birthplace of yours truly, provides a definite amber and chiffre feeling. Modern musks and strong woods are added to reconstitute moss. Twist. Narcissus Absolute is not really floral but very green, earthy, and wet, mossy. Aubrac Avron could be the French Montana, complete with dormant volcanoes, pristine lakes, less dormant rivers, and wild cattle on vast mountainous landscapes. Real moss would smell too old-fashioned in this seductive blend. The pure and much more expensive Narcisse Absolute gives everlasting its chiffre character. That's a note from the, from the brand. So, 
Um, this is an interesting one for me because I've never smelled anything from the brand. So this is my first uh, experience with this brand, if you will. And uh, while this is not a pure love because some of these fragrances that we're talking about, these are some of my absolute fragrances, especially Le Leon. Uh, and I would love to have a bottle of Sahara Noir. And I mean, heck, I'd love to have a bottle of Hot Lux, but I'd never give Roja that kind of money for that, for this, for that fragrance. Um, so it's a first experience with the brand. It's a positive first experience. It's a like, but it's not really a love. I can't say I, I, I got very excited when I saw this was a labdanum fragrance because I love labdanum. And I am enjoying wearing it, but again, like I said, the fragrance has a problem. I think these sell for 60 ml. Yeah, I think it says it right there. 60 ml is $110 or $125 or something, $150, uh, something like that, between $100 and $150. And while that's not insane for niche pricing, it uh, for me, I would rather just spend the extra money and get another bottle of Le Leon because I love Le Leon so much. This is, I don't think you can improve on a labdanum fragrance the way that Le Leon is constructed. It's just, it's labdanum perfected to me. And um, so that's the problem that the zoo has. Granted, it's a good first experience with the brand. I would like to try some of the other stuff that's out there. But this isn't a brand that I think I would just go hunting some of his fragrances down. If they fell in my lap, I'll try them. I'll give you guys my honest opinion. But this is a, you know, I don't do ratings. But if I did, this would be mediocre for me. It's good. I like labdanum. I, I think this is well blended. I think the materials are made, are well made. Never once was I wearing this going, oh, this smells cheap or... Um, I did confuse Christopher Laudamio with Christopher Carbonell, which is apparently the um, second name that Chris Maurice uses when he perfumes. So don't make that mistake because um, this is not the same guy as, as the Zerzhov guy, uh, which that Christopher Carbonell or whatever it is confused me for a second when I started researching Christopher Laudamio. But... Um, and I'm probably butchering his name, so apologies. Uh, but I did get to enjoy this and wear this thanks to one of my subscribers. Rachel, thank you for your kindness. Rachel, honestly, you're way too nice. And uh, I am going to do the comparison video for uh, 24 Falberg for you very soon. Uh, because I, um, I have both versions, like you said. And... Um, you know, it's uh, these kind of fragrances, these kind of fragrance reviews, while they're not revolutionary, there's nothing on here that's going to, you know, um, that's going to make you just explode with knowledge or anything. You're not going to have an epiphany or, or, or a revolution watching this type of a fragrance review. I think it's important because, you know, it documents my two cents on, on a fragrance that I never would have smelled otherwise. You're getting my honest first impression. It's out there. There's really not very much info on some of these. I saw Ouch 110 did a entire, like a 40 or 50 minute video on first impressions for the entire brand. But there's really not too many people that I would say are trustworthy that uh, talk about these. So I wanted to put this out there. I wanted to do it as a thank you, of course, for Rachel for sending it. And also, I just love Labdanum. I have been enjoying it. It's a like, it's not a love. I would not go run out and buy a full bottle of this, um, but uh, I am very grateful and appreciative to have to get to try this. And um, labdanum fragrances for me, the 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 real thing, the ones that I've shown you, they are some of my absolute favorites. So if you put a labdanum fragrance under my nose, I'm gonna like it, and that's exactly what this is. It's a like. I'm glad to have a sample. I'll get to wear it more, and who knows? Sometimes opinions and taste change. And it is nice. You should sample it. If you're a labdanum fiend like I am, then this is one that I didn't even know about. You know, I, I these four that I talked about are the big four labdanum fragrances for me. Uh, and if you know of any others, by the way, outside of Hot Lux, Laird du Desert, Marocaine, uh, Sahara Noir, and Le Leon that are just really labdanum heavy fragrances... I would love to know because if I haven't tried it, I would love to try it. So now we can add Everlasting to the list. 
and um, a good first take on the brand, a good first digestion of the brand. This will be a short video. Uh, if you guys have experience with the brand, I would love to know your thoughts. Um, and uh, I'll tell you what, more brands should do these big samples, though, because it really gives you a chance to wear it and appreciate it. I mean, look at this. Look at the difference. It's just insane. Um, so more brands should do stuff like this. This is probably three or five ml, and uh, it might cost them a little bit more. But look, it's getting good. It's getting good. Um, it's getting a good take from me on it. And so just that little bit of extra touch sometimes makes all the difference. I could wear this again, decide I like it, and buy a bottle, you know? So something to think about from the brands. Picking your sample, picking how you how your sample looks. I showed uh, an Emouage sample the other day, and their sample actually has a cap just like this. And it's very rare for samples to have caps. And sometimes something so small can make such a big difference. It It adds to the quality that that you're that you're getting um most of the samples are just the little dinky spray ones so uh anyways going off on a tangent but uh, i do appreciate you watching commenting liking and, and a subscription is always appreciated but uh, of course not necessary and uh if you've tried this i'd love to know your thoughts let me know your feedback and we'll see you again tomorrow with another video cheers bye guys